Axis, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. This is a, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of you for a while and now here we are finally recording our first video and uh, I've been secretly watching your content now for, I don't know, a couple months, just kind of jumping in and uh, kind of seeing what you're all about and um, you, you're a very chill dude and uh, I, I see in you that you're very intuitive on uh, like the moves that you've made in crypto and I think that that may lend itself nicely to something that's so like uh amorphous as pulse chain where, where there's a lot of unknowns and mystery around the chain and in this current of state of development and where it's going and so i thought maybe we'd have this be a good opportunity to get together and kind of hash out you know our thoughts and ideas on, on what's actually going on here so thanks for having yeah. me dude thanks for joining me it's it's fucking amazing to connect with you uh i watch your channel too um there's a lot of amazing technical stuff you have and your website is phenomenal uh, I don't know how much time we're going to have, but I definitely want to dig into so many things with you. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the show. And uh, man, I'm, I'm shocked you watched my channel, man. That's cool. Um, tell me. It's uh, uh, funny because there's, uh, there's, there's, there's this effect that happens when you first start getting out there and you start broadcasting to the world, like, <clears throat> especially with the pulse chain situation it's so deprived for good content that we're all we're missing the days of 2021 and 2021 uh there was just so much hex content and it was mm -hmm. you know at least some decent right because we're all living off the highs of the amazing price action of hex and yeah, yeah so yeah. nowadays like we're all like looking around for like anything that's fresh and interesting and so i think you know you jumping into the scene and sticking your hat in the ring has been really good. I mean, I think we need that. We need more unique new people to come in and provide challenging or differentiating views. And that, so that it's, it's been, it's been good to see that yourself and a few other people have stepped up into these roles when uh, everyone else kind of walked away. So yeah, I pre appreciate your hard work and I think it'll pay off. Yeah, thanks brother. That, that means a lot coming from you a uh, channel. I've been watching for a couple of years now. And I um, hundred percent agree with you. We need a lot of different creators, a lot of different voices, different personality types. Uh, the one thing that's actually the most amazing thing about our ecosystem and the hardest thing is that we probably have some of the smartest people in crypto over here. But what makes that difficult is they're so smart. I think they lose people. And one of the things I thought, if I'm going to make a channel, I just thought, how can I translate some of this stuff and make it easy to understand? and as simple as possible. Even though I know TA, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, and we definitely need more people, more voices, more personalities. Um, because the people we want to talk to right now are just sitting in CFI right now. Uh, they're, they've probably only heard of Coinbase because they heard it at the office uh, or on the news, and they're just waiting to hear about our ecosystem. I really feel like that. And the second they hear that we exist, they're going to come over here. So it's cool, man. Um, but tell me, I think you're you right. We need to, I, well, I can piggyback off that. Like, I think that you're absolutely right that the people that we're trying to reach, um, they're, they're ready, to, they're ready to deploy. Like they're, they're, yeah. these aren't broke people. They're ready to deploy into crypto. Like it's already, it's gotten the, it's gotten the green light in the, the past. Right. So that, you know, crypto is not so edgy anymore. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's mm -hmm. starting to tiptoe its way into the mainstream. And so people are just looking for the good opportunities and, we really, it, it really is a call to action for us to be able to produce relatable content that's simple and gives them a good um, value prop, right? If you can give these guys yeah. easy language to understand and a good value prop, like I don't see why they wouldn't throw a little bit into the ring. Oh, 100%, 100%. So tell me, um, really quick, uh, how did you get into crypto and how did you make your way over to Richard Hart or this ecosystem? Yeah. So for anybody who's never seen me before, um, I go by Axis Alive online. Uh, I started in cryptocurrency in uh, February of 2017. Um, so I would say I was like a mid-stage player that entered the game. And I started as a miner. I started as an Ethereum and Bitcoin miner. So I I started with um, NVIDIA cheap GPUs, uh, just in a little six card rig. If you know, guys know what that is. It's uh, just when you take a computer and you put six graphics cards and attach them all into this uh one machine and then they you open an executable file and you configure it for your wallet and then you just run it and it just prints money and i think i had a a moment of clarity and in, in, in doing that like i was like wow like you can 
legally print money in this day and age and it's it's open source free and fair and global immutable uh no you know cross borders you know you own your keys you own your control you have full control of your of your of your assets and you're just sitting there and producing these things and uh it, it was like the answer to the late, the age old question of how do we fix the broken monetary system as it stands, where it creates this huge, you know, inequality gap between the haves and the have nots. And it was like the really uh, profound moment for me in finding all that. And so that 2017 was my, was my, my intro to crypto. That is cool, man. And are you, is, is, any of that still relevant? Are you still running those machines? Yeah, hundred percent. That stuff is relevant in so far as, you know, I, I worked through the 17 bull market, made some money, you know, lost some money, made some money, then decided with a partner that I was going to build a, a, a mining facility. And so then in the end of 2018, we started building um, at the bottom of the bear. And in January of 19, we launched the building. It was like a, we had like uh, a like 60 ASIC miners and like 140 GPUs in there and wow. ran them on and off for all 2019 um, and into 2020. And if you remember 2019, it was a really choppy year for Bitcoin specifically and, and ETH had no chance. It was a very much a Bitcoin maxi type of atmosphere back then. But even then it was hard to remain profitable because the equipment that I was running was already going on a year and a half old. And that was a very competitive time in the mining race. So. Where this all kind of led to was, you know, 2021. I well, in, in the end of 2020, I uh, I had looked back on this initial investment that I had made in Hex, which was day one at Adoption Amplifier. I had put in a small amount of ETH and uh, forgot about it, walked away, and then <laughs> um, you know staked it. Right, it was a two-year stake for day one, and then um, it was like it was like 200 bucks or something and walked away and then in april the godwill came in and pumped it i was completely clueless at this time i was a bitcoin miner maxi not even paying attention to hex yeah and uh but but then i was like well there's got to be something more here so but around DeFi summer in the middle of 2020 i decided to look a little bit farther into this and that's when uniswap launched or was like really getting popular and uh by, by the end of the year in 2020 i had started actually really allocating heavily into hex to the best of my ability um and then it wasn't until February of that next year that I actually started streaming. It was after the online Hex conference Maddie, Maddie had that year where um, the, the Crypto Spar book guys um, uh, were talking a lot about how the T-share system works. And, and uh, that was a very exciting time for me because I was starting to realize that we could have a few. There was a path forward where we wouldn't have to just completely rely on Bitcoin and there would be other forms of uh, passive income that were, was that made sense and so in the in may of that year i actually uh, sold the mining facility at a huge profit and uh and walked away from mining and went full all into DeFi. Wow. and um and it was a, it was a great experience you know i learned a lot it was a hard rocky road and um but the but the but to your answer your question the the reason why that stuff is still relevant today is because it, whether people want to admit it or not, b like Bitcoin mining economics and the, how the, uh, how you calculate ROI and, and how you factor in like the kinds of efficiencies that's happening at the electrical grid level, at the, uh, at the uh, mining efficiency level and, yeah. and, and then learning about how hash rate works and all these complex topics. It does, it does lend itself to why the crypto markets move the way they move and when they move. And so <clears throat> all of that, those years of experience in mining really set me up nicely to be able to read the market with a higher fidelity. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. They say the two people that make the most money in crypto are ones that forgot about the wallet or they died. <laughs> so luckily you were the, you were, <laughs> you were the latter. You forgot about it. And, uh, <laughs> and then I guess after, after that big pump, then you, I guess you, you went full in as you're saying. And, uh, got out of the mining uh is a company that or whoever bought it are they still they still doing it i'm not sure um they were a bunch they were a group of ethereum miners and they had other facilities across the states okay. and um so they were coming into this of this new state to because what it was was 
the, the, the way that you have to set up this electrical system for a mining operation like that, it's, it's not something you can just find anywhere. So there is like an optimal pr- type of property you would look for to get like industrial level electrical because also that brings right. your cost down. And so it just mm-hmm. happened to be that we're at the top of the market and this guy was absolutely raking it on ETH mining in other places. And so they just added another facility. Um, right. I would assume that because they're ETH miners and now ETH mining is done that they're probably not mining anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you have a lot of that technical know-how, uh, out of curiosity, are you holding a, a pulse node now while that we're on this? Are you? Yeah, no, I, I'm, uh, I'm not validating right now, but, okay. uh, it's not out of the question in the future because uh, there's just so many more opportunities right now playing on the, uh, the application layer above the infrastructure layer right now, um, in terms of like LP providing and other things. So I think your capital is better, used in those places, although it does come with an, um, more risk. Yeah. It's more of like an active management philosophy versus like a passive income strategy, where, which is where most of your listeners that are coming in from the outside, their interest should be to start to just get exposure to, uh, to this whole ecosystem. You start with Ethereum, right? And then you kind of get some pulse. And then, of course, once you have some pulse, which is like probably step two, you could obviously lock that up in a validator and earn passive income at very low risk to you. Right, right. Cool, cool. And so for people that are brand new uh, coming in, uh, what would you say uh, uh, to, to what's the easiest way to start into Pulse Chain that you would think on ramp wise? If they have their well, ETH, I mean, sitting on they're, coin, they're, imagine they're on Coinbase right now and they're just holding some ETH. What should they do? Just go to bridge.pulsechain.com. Yeah. Well, right. hold on, hold on. Before you do that, go to get a MetaMask. So if you've never ever self custodied your coins before, make sure you talk, make sure you find somebody that you can trust to help you with that process. Um, okay. and sent to be able to send and receive coins because that's a, a, a an early sticking point in people's crypto journeys is they often like send them to the wrong address or they yeah. send the wrong amount or they don't know how to use the gas fee properly. So th- there is a couple steps there that, but after you've done it like two or three times, it gets it gets familiar. Um, so it's really easy. They just get, learn about the wallets, go right from their CFI, right into their new wallet, and then from there into the uh, Pulse Chain bridge, and that's it. That's right. It's actually yeah, it's really, really simple. It, it is really it is. simple. People overcomplicate these things. They do. They really oh. do. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So cool. Use the bridge, man. Just bring your ETH onto a self custody wallet. Go to bridge.pulsechain.com and type in the amount of ETH you want to send over the bridge. And then it, and then your ETH crosses the bridge. And then it's over in your same wallet on, on the Pulse Chain network. Just go to app.pulsex.com to start playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. Cool, man. Cool. So now we got a, well, a lot happening. Um, tell us, what do you think... Um, What's exciting you right now the most? Which chart have you been watching the most lately to kind of get a gauge of market temperature? What have you been following the most? Well, I mean, we got to start with the blue chips, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. Um, In terms of crypto, I mean, those have been, like Bitcoin's been the driver for this whole cycle so far. And with the uh, ETF money that's coming in, it really kind of changed crypto completely in a good way. It like really gave us the liquidity that we needed. Sure. So Bitcoin is obviously a must watch because everything that else is going to happen is going to, is going to cascade down because of what Bitcoin's doing for now. Um, and then Ethereum, of course, like, because, you know, us over here in the Pulse chain world are literally a fork or a, or a copycat of, uh, of Ethereum. It's the same code base. Uh, whatever Ethereum is going to do, we're going to be leveraged on that. So if, if Ethereum is going to go do like a 5x, Pulsing has the potential to do like a 25 to 50x. Like it's that big of a difference because of how right, illiquid. Right. Um, I mean, we got like $100 million of backing. So to, just to be straight up with your listeners, like there's $100 million backing this chain. And um, even though the market cap is like one around like 1. 1.8 to 2.2 billion, depending on the day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the market cap's like around 2 billion, but there's $100 million backing that value versus like, so that that ratio is 1 to 20. Versus like uh, Ethereum, where there's like uh, maybe three to four billion dollars of on-chain liquidity on Uniswap, 
And then there's, but the market cap is 300 billion. So there's a m- much bigger disparity in the on chain liquidity on Ethereum versus the market cap of Ethereum versus on our chain. So we are actually in a more, we're in a better setup with more liquidity earlier in the lifespan of the chain, yeah. which is going to amplify the growth factor. And we're going to become the most liquid chain because of the setup that we're currently on. Yeah. That's really exciting, by the way. I don't think most people we have the best market maker with the founder and some of his buddies like i this is my speculation and so you know we're set up in a way that what's going to make this chain successful is because it's going to have so much liquidity on chain to trade yeah so tell us about where this uh 100 million is and then tell us about the market maker um why is that so 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 important and what is it about it that uh, how can we understand that for people that don't even know what a market maker is, what's special about ours? Yeah, so there, so where the chain derives its value from is there's about thirty million dollars of stable of a uh, Dai, which is a stable coin, um, and then another thirty million dollars of of a couple other stable coins. So you're looking at like in terms of U.S. dollars that backs the ch- chain that's sitting on the bridge, right? That's sitting in the bridge, locked in there. And the way that these bridges work is there's Ethereum on this side and there's Pulse Chain on this side, and they can't talk to each other because they're two different blockchains that are compartmentalized off from each other. But what people do is they make a smart contract that's a bridge that can allow these two chains to talk to each other. So what happens is if there's a th- if there's value over here in Ethereum and you send it to the bridge, the bridge locks it on the Ethereum side and then mints and issues a new corresponding counterpart asset on the Pulse Chain and issues it to the user on this side. So in order to free up the locked money on this side, you have to send back the bridged asset and it burns it away, deletes that pulse chain version and then releases the funds on this side. So that's how a bridge works is it's like a, you send it, it locks itself on one side because you, you can't issue infinite money. Like you have to issue it on the collateral that backs it so that you know that the value is real. Right. And, um, and that's important important to understand how that concept works. So what we have is we have like, right now I'm looking at it, there's $93 million um, of value on locked inside that bridge on the east side, and it's being issued to the Pulse Chain Network on this side. And so in terms of like a market maker, a market maker is a very large player that uses the that the one it's he's the one that or he or she or the group of people or organizations are the people that come into any market and they they give the market the proper liquidity and volume and 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 aspects that they need for people to get make opportunity in there so that's what they call it a market maker it's because it's a person that's very has deep pockets that can come in and provide the necessary tools so that the thousands of fishes around him can come in there and get a bite to eat basically. And as long as there's thousands and thousands of fishes getting in there and and getting bites to eat, they're leaving bits of food behind and the market maker kind of cleans up on all the leftover scraps over time. And then as it, and then if the market maker is good at moving the market in a, in a price positive sort of way over time, the, you tend to attract more fish. And then all of a sudden you're attracting sharks and then you're attracting whales because the ocean just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right, right, right. So we have some big holders that are providing liquidity that want to benefit the chain. They're not here just to make money. I would say that in the case of Paul's chain, well, so there's two things to that statement. One, if we go back to Ethereum, the, those coins are more fairly distributed now that it's like 14 years into its life, or however many years, it's like 10 years into its life cycle at this point or more. 10 years, yeah. It's so launched in 2014, so about 10 years. That coin and that lifespan, that history of that chart and all of the battles and wars that have been fought in that asset has created like a more evenly distributed network with thousands of protocols that utilize ethereum as oil and gas of that network and and so in that case that network has dozens or hundreds of of market makers that are 
all acting in accordance or against each other's best interest. There, there's competition there. And uh, so a market maker, um, I think a market maker in and of itself is a net positive, even if they, so you can't really define a, a good or a negative or positive market maker because really ultimately all they do is they allow for growth. They, by them participating in, a, in any in market, they allow for the possibility of growth. And so what makes the pulse chains market makers different is relative to the size of the, of the market cap of these coins on pulse chain, their size is just, it just dwarfs the size of the pulse chain. And that's good because that means that we're cash, po cash positive. Like we're always going to be able to be, so long as these guys believe in the project, they believe in the principles of the project. Um, and they like, for example, like on the merits of decentralization, the pulse chain is sufficiently decentralized. It's vertically integrated. So it has all of the, um, like the decks it's got the, it's got all the necessary tools to make it, to put it in a better place than Ethereum is today, cheaper and faster to transact. There's a lot of like good principles that's been baked into this thing that would give this outsized market maker a reason to come, you know, make this home base for them. And mm -hmm. I think it's because the, because it's a reset of Ethereum, but it's also like a twin turbo engine. It's connected to Ethereum. You get all the benefits of it being brand new in the early, like the early days of Ethereum with all of these, all of the 10 years of, of growth and productivity and development automatically can get put on the chain from day one or from the first year, two years. So we, it's a kind of like a reboot, but you're getting all of the advancements of the technology all at once on a cheaper, faster network. And so it's like, it has the potential to actually supersede um, what Ethereum even did potentially. Um, it, it, but, but ultimately that remains to be seen because uh, there's, a, there's like some dark clouds hanging over this network right now because of uh, regulatory concerns and uh, price for the past few years have been down. Um, you know, so it, a lot of things can come together and I, we could make a case for that at some point in the call, um, about, um, the types of things that could happen in a certain sequence that could create a position, uh, cr create an, an op, um, uh, a possibility where the market makers involvement in the making of the market will diminish quickly over time because of the rate of adoption could just be accelerate crazily to the upside with very low input yeah, from the market maker. Wow. There's a lot to unpack in there. Um, what do you think we need to wait for the SEC before we, we start to make our move? Or do you think this can happen uh, in without, without that wrapping up? Or we don't know if it's going to wrap up in a positive or negative way yet either. Um, so I'm going to give these guys the juice, uh, something that I haven't talked about. And that's that uh, right now the game, like think about taking the, the pulse chain chart, which has been doing basically this. It's just been kind of going down, 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 down like this and curving out starting to base. The game right now is unit collection. So, so right now it's, it's, it's the, now is the time to be trying to capture as many units of the valuable assets on this chain as possible. Um, so instead of seeing the price go up and you make money, you should be able to see your units go up even while the price is going down so that when the price does go up a little bit, you're, you're, you're seeing outsized returns. So you yes. invert the price chart on its head and it's a supply game right now. It's, it's an arms race. It's a gold rush. It's a modern day gold rush for units of coins. It's not about price up for 10,000 X like the, and that's the problem with, uh, this chain is that they've got it in their head that this is a dead chain and there's no, you know, they got a, they got a lot of, there's a lot of bad takes around Paul's chain, but the, the game, the game will amp up to price appreciation when the dark cloud leaves. But in the meantime, now is the time to be trying to capture as many units as possible of the things that you find valuable on the chain. Yeah. hundred percent agree this. I mean, I don't think, it gets much better than this. I don't know anybody watching this who doesn't think this isn't the, the buy of the century right now. Um, you would be crazy not to see this. Even if you weren't into this chain, just knowing crypto, you would just see, oh, this is a great place to posi build a position right now. I mean, this is incredible. Um, 
Yep. And, and it, it, it won't become clear right away. I don't think I don't I've, obviously it's not clear for a lot of people that the opportunity that's here, but I think for watching your content now for a while, like I can tell that you can see that there's, <laughs> there's something special about this blockchain. It's hard to put your finger on it because there's about 9,000 things that are special about it. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, but it's, that's what makes me and you so want to nerd out and get excited about it is because we can feel intuitively that there's something here that's happening below the surface that you just can't quite see yet. That when it all starts to come to light, the opportunity is going to be missing you day by day. It's going to be like, you're going to be looking back and you want to keep your eye forward and on the prize. Yeah, uh, you could see there is only massive, massive, massive upside to be seen here. It, and it is going to be incredible. I do think we will print some kind of W here. I don't know how far we'll chop here, um, but uh, but it's going to be glorious when this turns around. And I think when it does turn around, it's going to be pretty qu- quick. I think you'll miss it if you're sleeping in one day. Yeah, I think you made a good case for this when you showed people the ton coin chart. Because the ton coin chart played out in almost the exact same way as what you're saying here. Yeah, I have a video for that uh, where I compare the ton in its first uh, year uh, to Pulse and it it forms a very similar pattern. You can see a W very clearly there too. Uh, So we can expect this when the chop is done to move up very quickly so you need to be building your positions now aggressively, uh, and then we'll probably create a little rim here, and then we'll be off into the sky from there. So you can almost imagine yeah, and the other side of this W coming up and then going sideways, and then whoosh, it'll be gone. Price discovery, that's right. So you may, we may come up and test those, that, that big candle on the far left of the chart there. We may come up and test those levels and try to try and kind of like get rejected from there for a little bit, which will be like the bar keep saying last call, like put your last orders in before we go into price discovery. Yeah. Maybe um, that, that rim forms here. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to here, which is very possible. Yeah. Maybe this is the, well, point. no, you, you could be right though. It could, it could form at the, at the apex of our last pump back in March. It could totally pump happen there like a cup and handle and here with a test or yeah. something. Yeah. You know, at, the, at a minimum, I think, well, I would say that, yeah, you're going to come up to that <clears throat> local high in March, create a, create a handle and then pop off that level and then maybe see some resistance at that previous high. And then it won't take long. It'll take a much less amount of time than the handle. Chop, chop, chop. And then boom, within a week, it'll just explode off the top because that's going to be accompanied by a lot of fundamental news and events that's going to be bullish for the ecosystem. Yeah. And like kind of like distill a lot of that doubt. Yeah, 100%. Now, are you? do you recommend for people to uh, look at all four of the RH tickers? Or do you think it's important for people just to focus on Pulse Chain right now if they're brand new to the ecosystem? Or should they also look at Pulse X and Hex and Incentive? What are your if thoughts? If you're brand new to the ecosystem, the only thing that, that should matter to you is looking at that Pulse chart because it doesn't matter what other chart you look at, its performance mm-hmm. is completely dependent on whether or not Pulse is going to go up in value. So I would say that generally, yeah, you don't need to look at anything <clears throat> else. You can, you can go buy, you could blind buy Pulse X, Inc., Hex, but just watch the pulse chart because if pulse goes up, your other those other things you just bought are going to go up at a faster rate, um, and that's due to how liquidity works, um, which is a whole other educational part of the, of the of learning this game. Right, right. So these are all bonded via liquidity, and which is mm-hmm. actually one of the coolest things about the pulse chain ecosystem. A lot of developers have bonded many things together, and you don't see that in the broader crypto market, like on Solana, for example. Um, but we have something very special happening uh, underneath all these tickers, which is this liquidity bonding. And you can see this W forming out here, and this is holding beautiful support, Pulse X. Yeah, Pulse X looks better than Pulse. So it's, it's holding its chart. previous structure a lot better. Yeah. And, and, and this is kind of... Hmm. And so, like, basically, that's why I said you could blind buy it is because... If you click the, if you want to measure this coin um, in pulse terms, um, it can really give you an eye on 
how much you could overperform or like what that even means. So yeah, if we, if we, uh, if you know how to get to that one, right? Pulse hex to pulse. Wait, which uh, one, see that button up, see that button up there on the top, right? By the, where it says, uh, USD in blue, click that yeah. button. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now you can see, this is how pulse X has performed against pulse. Yeah, it's just yeah. destroyed pulse. It's just went up against it. And so this is why I say you can blind. So basically if, if pulse doubles in price, pulse X is going to double in price, but because you're seeing this trend being so strong, it's going to do more than double. Because it's going to continue beautiful. to not only go up in pulse terms, it's beautiful. but and do USD as well. Yeah. And you know, this funny, this was against uh, uh, kind of popular consensus because everyone thought, you know, there's too much in pulse X, too many people hyped it. Pulse is the one that's going to outperform it. But you know, the tokenomics of pulse X cannot be um, understated. Um, it is an incredible deflationary machine or not deflationary, but it's burning uh, at an incredible pace. The token supply. Yeah, it's 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 deflationary because it's cap, cap supply and there's only less of it every day. So that's deflationary for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, uh that's, that's important. Great. It's important because five percent of all of the user supply is gone. <laughs> it's like the the, do, the dollar value of the of the coins that have been burned away is at currently at uh twenty million dollars of pulse X has been burned away already out of the user supply. <laughs> By next year this time, another additional $20 million will be burned away, except the prices will be higher. So that'll amplify that dollar value that's been burned away. Wow. That's amazing. That is incredible. And, and to your point about like the beginning of it, where ink and pulse X had really bad sentiment and it just went down into the right. Like you could see the early stages here of this chart. Yeah. That was all that stuff being true and everyone exiting and that, you know, wanted yeah, the instant hundred X and they all left. <laughs> yeah, you can see that. Yeah. From launch to kind of that. Yeah. That December, January period. Uh, and everyone wanted uh, right. a pulse. So everyone was d dumping their pulse X and they were getting into pulse. And I think that's what helped create this double bottom. And then uh, the selling pressure was gone. That's right. Sell the pressure pulse. is gone. And, 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 and the, and the bots that the, 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 uh, the buy and burn is constantly, auto buying for you on your behalf. <laughs> so it's helping you out every day. Every time somebody uses the pulse X to swap, you know, a little bit of pulse X is getting, um, bought and burned. So you got a forever buyer next to you when you buy pulse X. Yeah. Forever buyer. Phenomenal. Should we, uh, should we dare mention any price targets? Oh, I think, uh, in this chart here, like we're going to one to one for sure. I think, I think destiny for, for pulse X is to go to one to one and it'll probably exceed that at some point just because pulse chain inflates pulse X does not, you can actually, you lose, uh, coins. So Tell just people because what, of this, what yeah. you mean by one to one who don't know what that means. Oh, it just means that, uh, the, the dollar value of one pulse will equal the dollar value of one pulse X right now. That's about, it's about a 50, 50, it's about a little more than uh 50%. So 56%. Yeah. Yeah. So you get so currently for every pulse, pulse for that you pulse. a hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. And they're going to go to one to one. That's, that's, that's pretty interesting. I think you're the first person I've heard say that, to be honest, that's a bold, that's bold because I think people in the beginning, we're saying there's no way it'll even be four to one pulse X to pulse. Um, and now we're at two to one. So yeah, one to one, that's, that's going to be something. Yep. Um, and it's just simple supply and demand economics. That's not, you don't need to know anything about cryptocurrency to understand if there's more of something every day and less of something every day, it, it this gets more and more, this goes down and down, but the, but the price impact is reversed. So the thing that there's less of goes up in value versus the thing that there's more of goes down in value. It's just a scale. Right. As they right. trade against each other. Mm -hmm. And what about um, incentive token? How does this so incentive is going to have a crazy volatile lifespan. It's going to do some crazy numbers as it already has. Um, it's right now, it's like the golden goose, right? On Paul's chain. If you have it, <laughs> it's very well you're incentivized to go lock that in the, in the farm and earn more of it. Um, you know, upside price targets on it. I'm calling for 20 to $30 on the next <laughs> run. Okay. Um, yeah, and yeah. then probably a pull down. Yeah. And then probably what? And then probably it'll, it'll retrace the move 
from like 30 okay. bucks. It'll probably retrace the move pretty heavily, just like we'd saw here. And then we'll do a final leg late in the cycle that could go to numbers that you couldn't even fathom. Yeah. 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 I think I, th so they're calling an incentive token. And for people that don't understand, obviously we have farms and we have a limited number of farms right now. Um, there is a percentage yield when you lock up certain assets on the pulse chain. And we're all assuming that the way, um, they're going to uh, incentivize is by a adding more farms or b increasing the percentage yield that the farms provide. Are you thinking that's kind of the basic strategy for when uh, the chain pumps? That'll be one of the big initiatives there. So I've been farming pretty religiously this year, and all I'm seeing is every day is my unit counts are going down. Right. Every day, the amount of that I'm getting in terms of ink from my farms is going down, 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 down because every it's, the trade is getting piled into. Everybody saw the yield, and so everyone's yeah. flocking to the farms for yield, and so it's it's distributing that inflation rate, which is which is um, fixed and linear. <clears throat> it's, it's it's redistributing that out amongst more people, so you're getting less no, unless you yeah. recompound back in. And I'm so, what I think that. this ultimately lends itself to is a, a situation where everyone wants more ink and there's less of it available. So there's a constant right. supply squeeze. And and not only this, but the market cap of ink is like one fifth of the other three coins. And in the case of Pulse, it's like one seventh. So it's just, it's it's undervalued relative to the rest of them in the market cap. And there's less of them to go around every day. So 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 how, how will it be used to really incentivize people if, if obviously it's going down, which I'm noticing, I've been farming since last summer. Um, uh, how how can this be used? In what ways do you see it? Well, when, uh, when, when the chain? Yeah, yeah. this is a great, great, great question. It's like every, when there's less of something available to yeah. go around for the market, yeah. the reaction is that the price goes up. Right. So then your yield, your nominal yields in USD will go up by a large margin, even if you're getting less units. This is why I'm harping so hard on the units game. This is a so unit somebody, accumulation phase. Yeah. So somebody would have to take incentive off the market out of the liquidity pools, correct? Is that, um, or you think it's well, just naturally it, going to happen the, with the shrinking? That's right. So it, there, there's going to be less ink per person. Okay. And, and there's going to be more people coming in to, to get the ink, not only just buy it off the liquidity pools, but also put it in the liquidity pool. So people will be buying the crap out of it because they want it for the liquidity pools. Yeah, and then they'll be putting it in the liquidity pools, which dilutes the rewards even more for everybody that's existing in there. Okay, okay. So it's a double supply squeeze. So the people are going to buy it off the market, and they're going to put it back in the farms, which is reduces your payouts. And so, but the only re the only way that that can end is that the price goes up. Because and if you look at start this, start selling it into that that what they took off, they'll start selling it and putting it back into the market because the price goes up sell pressure inevitably, right? Well, that's the counter. So after this happens and you get the markup yeah. phase, so if you click on that, put this in pulse terms here. Yeah. You can see that you zoom out to like maybe like a three day or a weekly. There you go. See how the price has been, it's up big, but it's been consolidating sideways for yeah. so long. Yeah. This is setting up for a massive move to the upside that equals and rivals the previous move from the lows. And you won't get the sell-off until after that price rise. This is the squeeze you. phase where all of the ink that could be accumulated is being accumulated. A few of lucky guys that have a shitload from the lows have been able to make a lot of money here, but there's only a few of them, only like you know less than a dozen guys that could do that and push that chart down. And there's just not enough energy to push it down far enough. The only way that there's going to be enough energy to push the price back down is if it, if it goes up 10x from here first. Got you. Now, I think um, so part of this is also the price of Pulse has gone down dramatically in relation to incentive because um, incentive has also been going down too, but Pulse has been going down more so. Mm -hmm. So on the rise going up, um, this this will do a similar move like maybe you see here from this squeeze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct? Mm -hmm. We're looking at maybe mm -hmm. some some movement up here. So that I would say pulse. ninety to hundred thousand pulse per ink, maybe. Yeah, yeah, we'll probably target up here. 
Yeah. Yeah. We'd, uh, we'd have to figure out what the, to really get a really accurate picture, we'd have to figure out what like 20 to $30 ink looks like and what price that would imply that pulse hit. So it's, it's the math. It's a little bit more than probably we want to get into here, but it's not that hard. It's just like, look, this can double in price against pulse. And that means that if price does, if pulse does a four X ink is going to do an eight X. Yeah. In, do- in dollar terms. Very cool. Very, very cool. This is a cool looking chart. This is very cool. Yeah. So I teach this in my group. It's like, we don't really care so much about the USD, um, except right. for maybe on pulse, but we're yeah. only looking at the ratios and this is a ratio here. And so we're only looking at the ratios across the network okay. because again, this is a, this is a unit accumulation phase. You don't really need to worry about dollars until we've broken the all time highs on pulse. Right. Right. You want to, you want to be stacking your tokens right now. Mm-hmm. Um, now, are you ratio trading mostly? Is that is that kind of your your strategy and how you? I almost strictly just accumulate. Yeah, yep. yeah. I just accumulate. There's a li- I, like I wouldn't like trade that range right there. I'd rather just farm that range. Right. So right. from like where when was that when March till now? Like if you just sat in the farms, they, you're losing a little bit of ink, then you're gaining a little bit of ink, then you're losing a little bit of ink, oh. then you're gaining a little bit of ink. But it's all range bound, so you're just making right. ink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So for, for you, some of you guys who, who do or don't understand the farming, so there you have your, your two tokens and as the price of one goes up, uh, you, you're, it's being sold and you're losing, um, uh, the other one and vice versa. And this is what's called, um, uh, when, when people talk about, um, there's a name for this, uh, impermanent well, loss. And permanent loss. Yeah, you have permanent loss. But when it's in a range like this, because the yield, I think, is like 50% on ink right now, you can, you, you're not going to lose your ink, but you, don't, you didn't know that it was going to stay in this range, did you? Or were you just watching this very closely? Yeah, and the, when that first, when that pull down first occurs, yeah, you don't really know where it's going to stop. But, but be, we had that previous triangle that formed back in the early uh, part of the year. So you could, yeah. you had that to indicate what could happen. Now, this has proven to be just a way bigger magnified version of that same tr- ascending triangle. Yeah. Okay. And so in the beginning of it, when it's retracing, you don't know if it's going to stop, which is why you'll see farmers pull their LP at, toward a peak, uh, yes. potentially, if they don't know what's going to happen. Um, that, and that's what I did. I, I had accumulated quite a bit of ink because I was farming uh, and I saw this move up and I was losing ink very quickly. So I closed those farms and, uh, and you're hundred percent right. Once it got here, I guess, you know, it's smart to notice it had just been chopping and this would have been a great place to come back in uh, because you would have limited your, your impermanent loss uh, here. Mm-hmm. So what I think you're going to see out of all this is, is, is when the time is right and it could be like, you know, good news event or written, you know, dismissal of a SEC case or some event, you're going to see a massive spike that really dwarfs a lot of the previous price action we've been seeing. And as that's occurring, you have to be there ready to pull your farm at that point when the real move comes. Right. Right. Well, you really lose a lot of incentive. Uh, yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Should we uh, talk about um, a little bit of uh, hex? Yeah, we can talk about some hex. I'm gonna. I'm a huge hex fan. I hold more hex than I've ever held in my life. <laughs> uh, never thought the price would come down sub penny again uh, mm-hmm. in a million years. Um, and so now they're looking at the combined hex price. It's like I don't know. It's like oh oh five a six or something like that. I mean, it's really bad. It's like really low. Um, but you know where that value went is it's sitting in pulse and pulse X and ink right now. So if you had, um, sacrificed, I was doing the numbers the other day. If you had sacrificed for pulse, you're sitting on like anywhere from like five to seven cent hex value today. Right. right. Um, if you got the max, if you, if you got the max, uh, bonus multiplier and you got the max, um, sacrifice rate. So, I mean, there's guys that are literally still sitting on like three, four, five, seven, six, seven cent hex from the pulse chain sack, and it's it's as high as fourteen cent hex on the pulse X sack. It's amazing, like <laughs> because because they were sacrificing it at thirty one cent hex for pulse right, X, right. whereas like for pulse chain they were only mm-hmm. sacrificing it at like eighteen to twenty cent hex. So it, it, it the 
that value has been transported through time into the pulse and pulse X market caps. Yeah. Yeah. So people sold a lot of hex for the new chain. Do you think RH must have anticipated that? Or do you think the amount of hex that got sold for pulse was unanticipated? Because if it was anticipated, there would have been I think a strategic. It was yeah. Okay. I think the uh, second sack phase was convenient. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, we all, I, I think after the, after hex broke down past 20 cents and then, and then we couldn't hold 10 cents. That's probably the point where, you know, the, the founder knew that, you know, this was going to be a real bear market. Like it wasn't just, we weren't just going to get out of the scot free. Um, I think also, <laughs> I think everybody in this community has learned a tremendous amount about markets and DeFi over the last yeah. three years and education that you just coming in now, you're never going to get that education again because 100%. we, we did it first and we lived it. And so, but we, all we can do is share war stories and explain what's going on. Um, so anybody that's graduated to this point in their, in their pulse chain career is your leagues ahead of, of most people on every other chain where they're just like watching for the newest listing and trade and just like hopping into like a hype, like little three day hype cycle charts and stuff. Like yeah, that's yeah. not like a long lifelong skill. Whereas what we're doing as a community is building lifelong skills in Paul's chain. hundred percent, hundred percent. And so for the people that are saying, you know, hex is never coming back. Um, you mentioned the value was time transported into pulse chain. Explain to us how, when pulse chain begins running, hex comes back with or without uh, a lot of purchases, a lot of buys on the buy side. Yeah. So because there's like $10 million of pulse paired with $10 million of hex and they're, and they're locked like this in the same way that pulse X and ink are going to rise faster than pulse hex has the potential to do the same thing. Um, as pulse increases in value, hex can move easier because, uh, it's even got a, a, a weaker bond than, um, than pulse X. So like, Potentially, if there's any amount of bid that comes in outside of just the price of pulse moving, if there's any amount of bid that comes into hex, it's really going to accelerate and amplify hex's price moves to the upside. So it's a what if, but uh, if yeah, if, if if people do start to get bullish on hex, the price will actually really ramp up really drastically to the upside. And uh, you know, I think at this point, most hexagons would be happy with ten to twenty cent hex. Which is feel, makes me feel like once we get there and we can clear some of those levels, like tw like you know five cents, twelve cents, and then like that that twenty five cent level. Once you start clearing those levels, every time you clear one, it yeah. just frees up the whole upside potential. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Be a lot of happy people. Be, be, <laughs> yeah. the, the music videos are going to come back. Uh, I think at about ten or twelve cents. Um, uh, and and. Uh, it's really cool because we saw in the news that uh, the U.S. court um, reopened the hex manipulation case against Binance. That Binance was uh, 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 incorrectly uh, listing uh, uh, ranking on Coin Market Cap, and That's right. I believe I, now. <laughs> It's really interesting because I, I've never heard of them rebooting a class action lawsuit before. <laughs> yeah, first time I've heard of it. It does feel a lot like a setup in some ways. Yeah, it's like how on That's earth, right. honestly, who has been pushing? Like you know, and the same. It's all kind of happening. It's almost like. This is all right. I'm going, guys. I'm going into speculation mode. We're going to go woo woo, Let's and go. eventually Let's we're going to start talking about PDI. So it's going to be Let's crazy. Yeah. Segue into PDI. Okay. Great. So, so <coughs> SEC case, right? Right. You know, Richard got on there and he was twerking and he was going crazy last cycle and he was basically provoking. He's walking out of luxury stores with like giant bags of goods. He's yeah. basically provoking the SEC to come after him at that point and setting up this Pretty optics much. of like that he's a, not a good guy. <laughs> to try to get the eye candy right from the from the market and so yeah you know he might have he might have brought that in because he's like you know what this is this is my shot i i, I made it do the 10,000 x i'm ready to i'm ready to bring them in and like we know that we know that hex fails all the legs of the howie test we know that the language was proper for the sacrifice faces this wasn't a crowd sale and, and um 
And so I think he, he kind of like baited him in, in a lot of ways. And so he, you know, he's got hired 14 that. of the best lawyers. Yeah. And so then like the next logical step then is like, um, <clears throat> now we got the South Carolina case that's like potentially going to get dropped. And then we got, is that, is that um, the hot dog vendor guy? That's the hot dog vendor oh, yeah. thing that yeah. you know, that came out today. That and at the same time as this came out about uh, uh, this other um, what are we talking about the other lawsuit that um, not the lawsuit the the, the coin market cap lawsuit. Yeah, and so it's right. like it's all starting to stack. Like it's stacking. You yeah. got these two little mini lawsuits, and then you're going to have the SEC one without Richard Hart, and then because he's probably not going to show up for court because he's, they're suing code, and he's not the code. So like his representatives will be there, but he doesn't need to be there because they're not, you can't sue the human when it's either suing code. And so you, by him not showing up, he's making a statement about like, look, this is code, you know, and, and I'll yeah. still have representatives there on behalf of the yeah. code, but like, it's not, I'm just doing that as a good service to the community. You know, it's like, it it's really like he's backing up. I've been thinking about this too, you know, for, for a massive upward explosion of bullish news. I am very excited because i think it's a i think we're going to win on all fronts i think we're going to take over cryptocurrency it's a big bold statement but i've been out here being the crazy loon with a lot of you guys long enough that we we, we know that we're right intuitively like this guy this benevolent dictator he wants to win harder than anybody else in cryptocurrency and he knows that he's got the resources yeah. and will to do it yeah. and so he's going to take do anything he can to make sure that the principles of cryptocurrency is still true no middlemen totally true DeFi decentralization of the max um you know it, it goes deeper than that like you know my, my other things i want to say that i probably shouldn't okay okay well let's break it down they had um uh you mentioned uh they're suing the code or what what you know i, I don't know where they are in the case right now but the code is the issue but wasn't there this a similar not similar but uh tornado cash guy right and they went after him mm -hmm. and not the code right Mm -hmm. Um, now I don't know if that's, is that the same court that's, it's different or, or is that more criminal versus ours, yeah. which is more, more civil. Yeah. I think they said that he was, they, they basically made it look like he, they, they basically put him in a position where he was, up, um, abating, is abating the right word, helping criminals be criminals. And it, right. when all he did was create a piece of software and put it on the world, it's like, you don't shoot the gun manufacturer because he <clears> developed a new gun. Right. That's ridiculous. And so I think that's a very unfair treatment of Alex. I think it's like Alex Pertsev or something like that. Yeah, no, they, they, they shot him. Yeah, I mean, no, they didn't, but, you know, pretty much. But you're right. They don't shoot gun manufacturers, but they went after him, the guy. But maybe there was more uh, about that abating part than, than, than we realized. Maybe he, there was something there. Uh, in our situation, it's different. There was, there's no criminal activity or connection to criminal activity. Uh, it's purely civil. So uh, the code may be the only thing on the... Uh, on the on the on the news so mm -hmm. uh, yes so you know I, i'm not an expert in law or anything like that but i but you know i have a damn good intuition and i've been right about a lot of things over the years and i i feel strongly that pulse chain has a, a bright future 100 mm -hmm. and i think a lot of this really stuff's going to happen all at once like look cz is going to get out of jail at the end of september he's going to start the all coin <laughs> bull run you know, Richard's going to get mm -hmm. freed of all this bullshit. Our coins are going to moon. Um, people are going to get their banks shut down in times of crisis in the future. And like, yeah. they're going to be looking for a solution. And, de and there's nice. going to be Pulse Chain, the shining city on the hill, where you can go and transact 24-7, 365. Yeah. Catalysts, catalysts are coming that people don't realize yet, that I'm certain the heart man has thought of. And as all these things stack up, um, they're going to build into this and people will not have to look for it, but the necessity is going to come to play the necessity because of uh, changes freezing or the government or more, uh, uh, whatever control and weird laws for crypto. They're just naturally going to move in this direction. Um, so you guys are very early. If you're here right now, you're very lucky and you should be doing exactly what Axis mentioned, which is just looking at the co tokens, stacking the tokens. That's really yep. all. This is a do. game of units. You'll hear you'll hear Crispy Man from Hexfire.io and and me talk about this all the time. That this is a like you don't even have to believe. You just have to know that if you have more units tomorrow than you have today, either through farming, 
which is completely passive or through some other means. Um, maybe you DCA in or maybe you have some other method to bring to, to capture more units. Maybe you're strategic and, and you have a battle plan with how you deploy LP or, um, or maybe you are founder and you build something of value. You actually create a novel concept, right? You actually created value on the chain for users. There's a lot of things you could be doing is that you could be a developer. You can, um, you could be a marketer. You could, you know, go out and show your bags to the world and then get this thing out there. Cause it's, yeah. uh, there's so much opportunity here. Like I said, this is a reboot of Ethereum, cheaper, faster, a, a stronger, smarter user base than you'd had in the beginning. And you have all of the advancements of the tech here now and more coming like you're going to only see better um and more and better protocols come here that's going to give you more flexibility to survive than the upcoming bull and bear cycles nice nice you mentioned uh crispy man is this a crispy man you're talking about is he here? this crispy man yeah that's the one that's the one that's the one xfire.io yeah okay Cool. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a fantastic data analyst, and he he yeah. builds this giant database on the back end. And I mean, I can guarantee you that if you uh, if you ask him to send you some PDI charts, you'll you'll be you'll be liking that because uh, I mean, he tracks every sub ecosystem. He tracks the whole oh, yeah. pulse chain. He's tracking over like four thousand coins right now. Yeah, and he's got like proprietary data sets that gives us information about these coins, like the velocity of money. You know, obviously all the volume metrics that you normally used to see, but you, you can compare them against each other on like a mayor multi. And so if you're a technical nerd, he's the, he's your dude. All right, Pete, I did. This would probably be good to kind of close out on here. This is going to be interesting. So I actually, I think Pete, is close to bottoming here. I think uh, Pete, I is, I agree. Got a lot of upside potential for price. It's got a tremendous amount of support from the community. Do I think it could, do I think the whole pagging narrative is real or true or will happen? Not sure. It's not my decision. It's it's honestly the decision of the key holder who controls the maker DAO right now on the forked pulse chain. So like whoever is in control of those keys, they decide ultimately if mint and burn comes back on and how much collateral is in those vaults. But uh, what was is for sure is that this is a, there's a strong community behind PDI that believes in it and thinks it can go up in value and potentially <laughs> creates uh, stable pricing at a higher price. And that is possible even if... Um, even if the maker contract does not come online at any point in the future, sorry if I'm getting way over your head, guys, but I'm just trying to spitball all of my thoughts about this. It's like this thing is is just a regular crypto right now for all intents and purposes. It's a coin with a supply that goes up and down. That's what it is right now. But because of the the LP that's been locked between itself and a bunch of other things, one that comes to mind is a tropa. It's another token. And it's sitting on like a $28 million crypto to crypto liquidity bond. That creates this sort of effect where it acts like a pillow or a cushion where no matter how much die that you get at these prices, you're not going to be able to capture enough of it without slipping the price up. And then if you go to sell, you, there's a cushion there that keeps growing and building over time. And so ultimately, I just see the, the PDI and Atropa union or fusion as a, a possible, a possible, possibly really good trade, even if you don't believe in the, in the governance thing coming back online. So I just... PDI, very interesting and has tremendous support from the community. And if you look at gopulse.com under the PDI page, I mean, that's been, that, that page has been hit like over 200,000 times. You mean in the, in the website? Yep. On gopulse.com. If you click into PDI on there. Yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, I think it's been seen over 200,000 times. Um, gopulse.com. Where exactly? Yeah, so if you go to, uh, you can search at the top bar there and search for P, uh, Dai. Uh -huh. P Dai's there at the bottom. And so you can okay. see, if you scroll down a little bit there, it'll show you 258,000 views on this page. If wow. you compare it to a lot of the other coins on this chain, yeah, like my coin, for example, Axis only has 20,000 views. And it's done some crazy price performance. So clearly there's a, 
huge cohort of people that believe in what's going on with PDI. Wow. That's it was also the first, it's also the yeah. first ecosystem that actually did a damn thing after the SEC crash. Yeah. 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 Now, why do you think people care about, about it so much? Is it just the provocative nature of a, of a, a stable coin pegging or is there more to this? 100%. Why are people so intrigued? That's it, right? It's intriguing. What do you, what do you think first? And then I'll, I'll tell you what I think. Cause I'm interested to see, hear what you think. I think that, uh, the P dot or a stable coin pegging, it's like, you know, it's like the pot of gold at the end of there. I mean, it's a fantasy. It's, it's, it's been yeah. tried so many times now in crypto and failed, brutally failed. Um, that I think people believe that this could be the one that actually makes it, you know, and we want to believe it could be the one that actually makes it not only that, but if it does make it, it's tremendous upside from here too. So there's a lot, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of, uh, green to be had as well. Um, so mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that makes it the most provocative for people. I don't think people quite understand the whole tech and the maker DAO and the collateralization and everything going on under the thing. Uh, most people I'm guessing, um, I think it's the fantasy. I'm with you. I'm with you. I think it's a, it's a damn good story. And if it, if, if you're able to create for the first time ever a stable out of thin air, that says a lot about what, what value means in this world. But you said, uh, uh, earlier when we started the P die that it's a possibility, um, it's going to do well regardless. Do you not think that this may be, um, something, um, uh, a rudimentary, like a fundamental part of Pulse Chain that it would have to be, or do you think it's not necessary? So I might differ from Mar the Maria Dev on this a little bit. I, I think even if Pulse Chain, or I'm sorry, even if PDI doesn't necessarily go up and, <laughs> and, and peg, right, in the way we think it will, mm -hmm. it's already succeeded. And, and doing something that everyone thought was impossible. And that's creative community around something and make them and get them believing and buying it. And you look at the volume on there and you look at the liquidity and that, that speaks yeah. for itself. So in my mind, Pete, I already won. I didn't know there was half a million holders. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> A lot of that holders actually is just is just from the fork. So a lot of those holders had P die or die on Ethereum before the fork. So the real question is how many of those holders are have been active within the last 365 days? Mm. Oh, inter so oh, interesting. Be, I get you. I get you. Yeah, that would be a good thing to, for Crispy Man to break down and be able to go in here and find out. You know, hey, did how many of these guys are new? That would be cool. That would be cool. I got a lot of people messaging me mostly for when's the next PDI update. So maybe I can bring that in. Um, I think a lot of people also came to the chain for PDI originally, or that's, that was their first thing. Uh, at least I'm thinking so because the excitement of people when, when, uh, PDI comes up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very cool. Now, uh, I do think it may be, uh, fundamental. Uh, I think for this to be truly a decentralized system, this may be, um, it may be pivotal. It may be the, you know, something really necessary to be there, but you're feeling there's still room for it to be. It's not necessary that this may just pump and we should enjoy that. And that's enough. Yeah. What I do don't, I don't think that all Shane would fail if Paul, if Pete, I didn't peg. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. I think, um, I think the PDI price will settle higher than the recent high too. 100%. So does that kind of meet, explain what, where my thought process is? So it, it'll go up a lot more and then it will, it'll break that all time high and wherever it settles at the next low after that will be higher yeah. than the previous high. Yeah. And, and that there, even if it doesn't peg to a dollar that it's already winning multiples, it's already doing cycles within cycles already. So it's done its first bull market and then a bear market and it did a second bull market and now it's in its second bear market. And it's about to go through its third bull market after after right. bottoms here. Right, right. Very cool. Yeah, there's there's another massive leg up, and I think you're 100 correct. I think we may chop. We may have, uh, you know, some dippy poos, you know. But I think maybe end of September, 
uh, that might be the end of your chance to really accumulate and put a big bag together. Uh, and it, it is funny how it all times up uh, with uh, CZ coming out, the SEC lawsuit, <laughs> Uh, this now this hex uh, re rebooting of this case it's really interesting really interesting and this is a this is an amazing cycle I know a lot of people to their chagrin this is not the best cycle they've seen but it is an interesting cycle um, I guess I guess <laughs> well, I'd I rather take this could go a lot longer I really it do. could it in could. terms of the it, cycle it could get a lot stranger than people realize to be honest don't uh, don't think you, anyone has it figured out because nobody, I mean, the smartest guy you know, or did you, I don't know, did did you think it was gonna, we would have a high before the having, Or did you know anyone who thought that? I didn't. No, dude, how could how could we? How could we have thought that? N nobody did, right? So a lot of people thought, remember, do you remember the, the sentiment around when the, before the ETF launch, everyone's like, oh, it's gonna be a sell the news event. Yes. Talk about bear market PTSD. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I mean, in some ways it did. It just, just chopped one a little bit more, but, um, but it wasn't quite what people thought. And if the smartest person you knew didn't even throw that out as a possibility, no one, no one knows what's coming. No one knows what's coming. It could, be, it could just be really boring and simple from here on out. Maybe it is just standard and that fucks with people. Uh, or maybe just it's going to do some really weird things soon too. Who knows? Um, yeah, so I do think that inevitably Pulsion is going to get a huge markup in price, and 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 in terms of like Bitcoin, um, I feel that this is like that 2019 inflection point. Like we're basically living through what happened in 2019 and 2020, where that's you see thing? that sideways price action back there. Yeah, that's exactly where we're at. Except that's that it's happening at the highs instead of happening halfway up the chart. It's such an interesting. Uh, structure, man. It's really, it's really, it's yeah. really weird, man. Uh, we are under I'm resistance. Under uh, I'm recording. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, I just had this as the most important line here, which was coming from this uh, uh, twenty six thousand up, and we are under that right now. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we just keep filling out this. Uh, broadening yep descending broadening wedge which is a bullish reversal Center. pattern but doesn't mean that you can't make a new a new local low there because yep. we have uh 33 000 more bitcoin being released from the mount gox reissuance oh is it okay. um that got sent to bitco today and so then that's potential Oops. sell pressure um and uh you know we <laughs> It's just massive accumulation that's going on by from big institutions anyway. So I think a lot of that would be eaten up. And I think mm -hmm. a, t a retest of 44 to 46 K is totally in the cards still. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, but no matter what we're going to, this is not the end of the bull market by any stretch. No, I don't think so. I, don't think I so. welcome the sideways actually, because it implies that we get more harder upside later um, because the momentum will get a lot stronger rather than us yeah. just blowing off before the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And what do you think about all these scheduled, uh, so for people that are, are watching the news and they're being fluttered out of their bags or they're at this place of uncertainty, one thing I'll say about all this news that's been happening as, okay, we'll talk about two things. One is all this war and all this bad news, and then two, all this recession news and, and stuff. Well, number one, recessions are rarely scheduled so perfectly. Uh, and two, rarely are attacks, battles, and war plans scheduled so perfectly either. So all this has been very strange um, that uh, everyone knows when everybody's attacking and everything as if, um, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on all that for people that uh, watch the news or are worried about recession that's coming? And you guys, it's uh, August of 2024, so if you're watching this in the future, that's where we're at. Yeah. All I care about is global liquidity and the Fed's commitment to not letting the market crash. Um, that's, that's so like right. if we look at the global liquidity index, which we could pull up, um, it's actually an indicator, I believe. Um, or there's probably a chart for it as well. But um, I, made, I made a video it's basically on it, saying yeah. that. OK, so so your viewers know then. So yeah. ultimately, all that matters from here is that there's more money coming into the system and, and there has to be more money coming into the mm -hmm. system because there's a certain amount of um, 
debt that needs to be paid back from the U S government has to pay back, uh, yield on its treasury holders, uh, bonds. And so either they're buying back shit bonds or they're paying people high yields. In, in both cases, they're going to have to print money to, to continue this from collapsing. And the Fed's made a commitment to prevent massive collapse. And if they do happen in the last 20 years, they've always been eaten up within a four years. And lately, it seems like they've been eaten up within six to 12 months. So yeah, yeah I just, I'm, I'm not really in a fear-based mode at all. And all we can really do is just protect, like accumulate more units of crypto, and it's going to continue to outpace currency debasement and inflation. And you just have to, you know, keep your family safe. You know, have the necessities, have six months of uh, bills like stacked up somewhere, and just keep stacking uh, cryptocurrency. Yeah, hundred percent. You guys can see how these track uh, very closely, and they don't like deviating. And you can see the asset and BTC is already making its way to meet GLI. And uh, they might, as you said, we might get that 45K and they're going to meet perfectly. And maybe from there, that my time with the printers turning back on again in a big way, I suppose. Yeah. And I think, you know, you do couple that with um, not necessarily a rate crash, but like rates, like slight decline in rates and then stabilization and really just like elevated mm -hmm. rates above 5% for the foreseeable future and then you get a new um bullish uh, pre uh administration in the u.s presidency yeah. like yeah like i said with all these things that could stack up from a crypto side of things and then you fit factor in what could stack up on the on the political side of things like yeah. it could get it's going to be bullish i mean you're going to see money printing like you haven't seen before and you want to be in a position where you're owning assets to uh yeah. outpace outpace that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent agree. So before we wrap up, should we touch on we're in a presidential election year? Uh, what do you think? Should we uh, should we make a call? Who's gonna win? Yeah, I mean, I I think Trump's got this in the bag. But I would like yeah. I, I, but. I gotta say that uh, <laughs> that Robert F. Kennedy has his head on straight and has a lot of good. Um, I'd say he's like a moderate like player in the space and but he's got a lot of uh <clears throat> better idea a, a better of an idea of how crypto works which is which is great so i mean i i like him a lot too but uh i think let's let's admit that uh trump's probably got this one i would say trump's got this one but it's obvious there are forces that do not want that to happen that's very clear now um so this is going to be really interesting how this plays out very interesting how this plays out man uh, but I think I think we're bullish either way. No matter w what happens, we're going to be yeah, it's going to be bullish for sure. If uh, if if something else were to happen and, and this country and the and the states were to have trouble, I mean, um, it, it doesn't it doesn't uh, stop the the crypto bull market uh, by any stretch. Um, yeah. Even if it slows it down. It. Yeah, yeah, it could amplify it because just like yeah. as we saw with like the banking collapses back in uh, March of last year, twenty twenty three. Yeah, it was uh, you know uh, banks were failing all over, but then there was this huge ten thousand dollar spike on Bitcoin from like fifteen k to twenty five k. It was like seven, actually, it was like seventeen five to like twenty six or something. So it's almost a ten thousand dollar move in just a few days, which really signaled that this is a environment where people are looking for high quality things to protect their wealth. Like gold is an obvious one. And now that's where Bitcoin like I put on the main stage, I think. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting. Gold moving up. Uh, do you think that's signaling something messy or do you think it's just more? I think on it's, institutional it's signaling level? that, uh, yeah, I think it's signaling that um, world governments are ditching U.S. denominated debt and they're mm -hmm. going to go put their value in gold and mm -hmm. and wait out through the time, the uncertain times here in the States. And then once the, things change in the next year or two, and then maybe we actually see an entirely new monetary system. There is rumors of that we're getting a new type of currency system being put into place. Um, whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. I, I think it makes sense to do this. It would look a lot like... Uh, Instead of the Federal Reserve being the main driver of the U.S. economy, you'd revert back to the U.S. Treasury being the main driver, and we'd issue our own currency notes. And that would, you know, instead of it being a Federal Reserve note, it would be like a U.S. Treasury note. 
Um, and then, you know, that may be inter- exchangeable, uh, like at a rate of like one to 100 or one to 1000. And then it would just be a whole new system that would get put into place that would redenominate the currency in a different standard of units. So instead of it being a thousand dollars, that thousand dollars would equate to one new U S treasury dollar. And it would just be a complete system reset. Um, but yeah, it's, it remains to be seen what's going to happen. But you know, I'm here for it. And go in a lot of ways, cryptocurrency is already making people think differently about money and um, redenominating their world in crypto terms. And that's already a yeah. huge win. So I'm here for it, and I'm excited to be a part of the space. Man, Axis, you are a very interesting guy. I could talk to you for hours, for sure, man. <laughs> um, Thank you, man. Yeah. Tell us, uh, how can people find you? Do you want people to reach out to you? Uh, I know you have like full classes and courses as well on your website. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so I, I run a website, it's called accessalive.com and it's really just focused on beat outpacing currency debasement and inflation by using the tools of cryptocurrency. And some of my favorite tools that I'd like to educate people on are chain analysis, which is like watching wallet movements and protecting yourself from bad actors. Uh, technical analysis is like the weakest thing that you could do in crypto because so much of it and DeFi is not dependent on that but still interesting nonetheless and does work better on heavier assets and then um liquidity providing and liquidity provision which is like a whole new element to the game where you become the market maker and you can get edge in the market through all these different connected pairs um as well as just looking at the general like market cycle theories and and best practices looking at this on a larger six to 18 month swing trade basis and not so much looking on the day-to-day or hour to hour but just zooming out and seeing where we headed over the next two to five years and trying to always just accumulate bigger bigger position sizes to capture those big run-ups over time and so that's all through my website at accesslive.com we currently have like a telegram group of about 120 people in it and uh you know, we, we get together. I'm every day I'm posting um, analysis and updates and stuff. And um, that's a, that's sort of like a paid membership group. Uh, but if you want to check okay, out yeah. some of my other more free content, there's um, there's youtube.com slash access to live. I'll be streaming on there like intermittently. Yeah. Um, and, and on the X account, X, 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 X.com slash access to live. I usually post lots of content on there as well. Oh, yeah. So that's awesome. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. And let me yeah. uh, come and chill. Oh, I also made a coin that did over, you know, multi billions of percent against Paul. So that was pretty cool. Do we have time? Do we have time? Should we look at it? Or yeah, we, we can look it? at the chart. Quick. I mean, it okay, did get okay. a nice pop the other day. So maybe we, uh, okay. we show guys how access the access price can set the floor. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, I'll keep you here for another two hours, man. Uh, I just thought maybe you had, <laughs> you had like dinner waiting or something for you. So I'm like, okay. Um, yeah, so, we'll, oh, we'll wrap with the access chart. That's a good idea. Let's, okay. Let's do that. Okay. Let's go. Um, <clears throat> right. damn that's a good trend line that is solid trend line man it's holding it's on its way up that's you know we doesn't get what else do we want Your so the the usd price on this one is interesting no doubt and this here is like a weekly chart and you can see that the macd is starting to slow down it's uh it's the the sell pressure is declining and it's starting to base out mm-hmm. a lot of that pressure that came so in the there on like um <clears throat> in may was Mm -hmm. was because uh one of the largest access holders got got they got their account drained so they this was a person that had 41 coins um that wrote it up from a valuation of a hundred dollars for their 44 coins all the way up to a valuation of 1.1 million dollars and then they went to a a a faulty link a scam link and and approved a transaction and then they that that scammer they drained his wallet of the 1.1 million dollars of crypto and uh and then that got liquidated on the market within 12 hours and so it caused this massive sell pressure on access where we lost about six hundred fifty thousand dollars of backing value in pulse oh, was right which here. is unfortunate was it that uh no it was it's the wick actually this it's wick, the wick yeah. uh, oh, right, yeah. not that one though the red wick to the downside after that big green wick okay it doesn't look that bad on the weekly that one right there yep that little red one that yeah so that that right there and um it was when it would have been like in may or April, yeah, April 29th, that's the one. Okay. So anyways, they, that's why we were dealing with this recent sell-off because we had so much momentum going mm-hmm. into uh, the solid index launch and the two solid pool okay. on the two Fox exchange where you you can earn anywhere from 55 to 60% APR for holding these coins. Okay. Um, but yeah, against Pulse here, you can see clearly that the market structure is way more well-defined and like we're just, we just bounce hard off the, re, the, the, the major parts of the, uh, like especially if you look at it on like a, 
on a monthly here, you'll see that we came down and perfectly back tested the the highs from back in uh, 2023. Like how those candle bodies closed and like, yeah, the lowest one's right there. Yeah. If you just put a straight yeah. line there, like you can see how hard that thing came back down and bounced. Axis was the Axis hit ninety eight thousand dollars a coin um, <clears throat> on that wick, which was just absolutely phenomenal and insane and unprecedented. So yeah, I think I started watching it's, around it's, there. It's been a, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> so yeah. this is Chris. So, what are the plans? Um, what, are, what are we? We're, we're obviously yeah. So there's gonna, we need to retest this area again and move back up. Yeah. Yeah. So this if so this is like a falling wedge that it was in and it broke out. So um, it's a bullish reversal and. It's, it's coinciding with the launch of a new supporting contract for Axis, which I think is going to be bullish, but I haven't okay. announced it publicly. Okay. Okay. Um, but when I do, um, you know, dive into it and, and I'm happy to hear like your thoughts on it and, and what you okay. think <clears throat> makes sense or doesn't make sense about it. Um, okay. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously super biased and I'm, I think that the Axis price could go insanely high on its own but with this new contract that's going to actually give incentive for a reason to make it go up in price so gotcha. yeah, i'm excited to announce that <clears throat> yeah if we have more time i mean we can talk about the tokenomics i do follow this and i also follow solid x um as well and i, I think you mentioned these might be bonded a little bit via liquidity there's um, about there's about four hundred thousand dollars between them okay ish okay. Um, on, a, on like three or three different pairs, I think. So there's like a nine inch pair and then there's a pulse X pair, okay. Axis solid X and they, uh, they do they they complement each other really well. So like Axis is more like the high beater, high volatility, high priced item. And then the solid X is more like the lower priced, bigger market cap, um, and deeper liquidity pools. So like Axis has like $250,000 of pulse backing, but Solid X has like $400,000 of pulse backing. So they do complement each other in different ways. Okay. okay. Um, but because the ticket price is so big on Axis being like 10 grand a coin, yeah. um, it, it, the slippage is a lot because you're dealing with a coin that's worth 300 a million pulse. And so like yeah. the the price fluctuations are just insane. And that's so I... And whereas like solid X, like that's going to be more of like your, it's more affordable to get into and it has deeper liquidity, but once it gets momentum, it's going to act like a, an engine or a power core for the index to just, just ramp up like a huge engine. And then like, you know, access will just be like, um, a super high priced floater that just like bounces off of that. So okay. they're going to complement each other really well to, and we're probably going to see some pretty high, high numbers a cycle for both. Yeah. Do you think, do you think this volatility or this, this is rare or do you think we're going to see some major volatility or do you think it'll stay like a steady grow grower? Yeah, I think over the long term it'll stay pretty steady, especially if you throw it on log. Um, I, I prefer the linear chart as well, like you have here, but if you yeah. do put it on log, it really does. And then you have to like get rid of the beginning candle. Yeah. You'll see that it's in a channel here on, on the log. If you cut out the if you cut out that really weird an anomaly from like um, where it went down the second time, yeah, you can see like a channel there. Um, yeah, so if you like connect, from, it's it's hard. It was from that very first wick back in like September of 2023. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. there across the top. Um, yeah, you could go there. And then can, yeah, like okay. right there, right there, okay. yeah, right there. Because I like the candle bodies too. And then if you copy that, clone it, and then br bring it down to the base where you think it connects to the most points, yeah, something like this is like kind of what I'm seeing in terms of like um, potential like upside downside levels. Of course, I think the lows are in, so it's bouncing off the midline. So if you clone that one more time, yeah, like that would be like the midline or like right in there where it bounced, and then like the lower bounds would probably be. Um, yeah, something like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, just keep an eye on it. It's going to be an interesting one. It's super scarce. There's only 500 coins in the in the circulating supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and so it kind of sets it itself up nicely for just re ultra scarce market supply. And we all yeah. we all know from what Pulse X is doing to Pulse how how that's performing against Pulse. So here's hoping. Okay. And do you have plans for other uh, tokens or projects coming up? This yeah, it's just the, this contract. Navy? This contract I'm talking about. Yeah, so this coin is like as as is. It's just a standard PRC20 boilerplate coin that just 
has a million total supply and the circulating market supply is 500 coins. And um, that's, that's the new so con- interesting. Uh, where, where are the other coins? Are they just held in, in like an OA or a one wallet? Yeah. Yep. Yep. We call it they the core address. Out. Yeah. There's, core address, there's okay. a core address. Yeah. That's like the kind of like an OA style address. That's, um, you know, you can go, you can find it on DBank. If you type in uh, Axis on DBank, you'll be able to find that address and track what it's doing and stuff. So it's totally transparent um, since day one. And, uh, and for, I think I think economic centralization has proven itself to be a very profitable venture for for everyone that's involved. Uh, whether you talk about um, B and B, which has got that D-Bank, tremendous, uh, you know, centralization. D D E Bank. Uh, there you go. That's the one. Dbank.com. And then if you search for an address and you just type in Axis, it might pull up the. Uh, the the core address yeah that's it so this is like a public you know you can see this and you know and check out the transaction log and the, and everything and find out what this wall what this wallet does this it's is a, a cool um, you can see that there's a it's a huge holder of solid x as well so and fire as well which is are both index tokens uh, and you can like even go further and i believe and break down like liquidity what it's what it's doing for liquidity and um so yeah, man, have fun and uh, dig in. And when uh, when you see this new front end launch for this new contract for Axis, it's going to take this stuff mm-hmm. to a whole other yeah. level. So oh, excited yeah? to launch it! So cool, man. Yeah. When's that coming out? No, I can't say because I, I don't want to mislead people. <laughs> can't say. I wish I knew, but uh, would, but it is okay. I can tell you this though: it is alive on uh, testnet. It works. It's it's oh, running. It's on a live. It's uh, on testnet. So all right, very cool. Yep. Very cool. Um, what do you, um, will you come back again? Can we talk about liquidity sometime when we have you back? Absolutely. Have me back in like a month and we'll talk about liquidity on a really deep level. Yeah. Cause it's yeah. the, it's probably what my expertise is in the most. So yeah, I know. Happy to talk about it. I know. I just, you know, I was like, that's going to be it. Like, uh, we'll have to like have like food ready and, uh, blank <laughs> go on forever. Uh, might have to do a in, in the flesh, uh, meeting and we'll just do, uh, yeah. You know, we'll get around the, in the fireside chat and we'll do a, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I did a, a Wall Street of crypto and I tried to kind of create an, something in there to help people start to understand, to ease them in. Because I know a lot of people are, are curious about it, but they're already confused with basic liquidity just in general. But underneath Paul Shane, there's really interesting th- things happening. And uh, I know you're a specialist in that. So it'd be great to, to dig in there. And hopefully people start to really grasp it and, and understand we have more developers constantly utilizing um that um more so than i've ever seen anywhere else it's really cool what's going on um so yeah. yep and you're getting to do it at the bottom uh bear mark uh the the bear basement floor prices <laughs> so then that means that no matter what pulse does in price from here it amplifies all your liquidity pools and they grow yeah. exponentially so it's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it's a unique time and a unique setup and if you're listening to this for the first time get excited and get in and dig in now you, the time is running out so thank you very much man and dude, happy yeah. to ha- happy to be coming back dude awesome man can't wait access thanks so much for joining us man uh anything else man Anything I just else? want to say uh, thank you for coming into the scene and providing quality content for people and, and pushing the boundaries of what hexagons were okay listening to and uh, opening up people's minds to new ideas. And I just want you to keep being true to yourself and coming out here and producing good content for the community. And I thank you a lot and happy to keep, see your growth over the next two to three years. Dude, that means so much. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Can't wait to talk to you again. Yeah. All right. Night. See you. See you, buddy.